What's the good word, Josh? Your boy DKB here. I wanted to dive into some of the latest news surrounding Hassan Reddick. And in recent uh, interviews that were done, we got a quote from Quentin Williams. You got Hassan Reddick, unbelievable MVP caliber type edge rusher, defensive player of the year type edge rusher coming over from the Eagles. And he goes on to mention his excitement for what that means for the defense and, of course, the team's success at large. But in light of what has happened last year and, you know, the caliber player Quentin Williams is, I would imagine this isn't just him saying things to, uh, you know, uh, uh, try to attract him to get back in with the team and still show there's no hard feelings or anything like that due to his absence so far. But I think this is a, a realistic sentiment that he feels. And I think the coaching staff would share this same thing when you compare him versus Bryce Huff, which is going to be the case this entire year, right? Bryce Huff being the younger player, him also being elite in his own right, even if it was in a lesser specific role. But the idea was you're getting a more proven veteran player. Obviously, there's a little bit of a bump in run defense with getting a guy like Hassan Reddick versus Bryce Huff. And the contract situation ended up being a little bit better, right? Hassan Reddick's $15 million versus Bryce Huff's 17 And, of course, it's one year versus three. But I don't think this is far-fetched. Also, kind of the thought process here is that we've heard multiple times from the coaching staff and players as well that the the media circus last year with hard knocks and just Aaron Rodgers being in the building and all the hype and everything kind of got blown out of proportion and maybe those in and amongst the team lost themselves in the hype, right? So this year they want to fly under radar as best as you can, but really just stick to themselves put in the work, get the consistency out there, execute on the field. And I think about DJ Reed being slaughtered last year for wanting to, uh, or for his comments about the defense being historically good, or at least his thoughts that it could be historically good and how that ended up turning out, right? And obviously, I would think most of us know what his intentions were, but I would imagine, you know, even with every man being itself, Quentin Williams would pay heed to how that situation played out. And of course, the the maybe unbeknownst pressure that would put on a guy like Kassan Reddick. But I think Quentin feels it. I think the rest of his defensive teammates feel it. Um, Hassan Reddick himself should probably feel it and, and the coaching staff. So I think it makes a ton of sense. And when you think about that Defensive Player of the Year award, it's not far-fetched that he could be in the running, right? You take a look at the last five years of guys that have won this accolade. Miles Garrett, Nick Bosa, TJ Watt, Aaron Donald, and Stephon Gilmore dating back to 2019. Four of those five guys being essentially pass rushers, right? I'll throw Aaron Donald into that camp as well. And the floor for this, you know, the the stats generally, or I would say the award winners for this are generally boosted by whatever the sack number shows, right? For fans that aren't uh, very knowledgeable about the sport or anything like that, and just looking at something on a piece of paper, that stat number is going to that sack number is going to stick out like a sore thumb. And the floor for this award was as recent as 2023 with Miles Garrett's 14, and as high as T.J. Watt's 22 and a half back in 2021. And we've seen Hassan Reddick fall, you know, essentially smack dab in the middle of this number when he reached his career high 16. <clears throat> excuse me, sacks in the season. So we know he's capable of producing these elite tier type numbers. Can he replicate it? You know, we've talked about this defense ad nauseum about it still potentially being a top three, but uh, definitely in the conversation of being the number one defense in the NFL, if it gets the boost we all expect from the offense, and that's just going to parlay itself into more and more opportunities for Hassan Reddick and the rest of this defense to eat. But just the logistics when you think about pairing him with the interior monster of Quentin Williams, him having another star-studded and ascending partner on the opposite edge in Jermaine Johnson, and the story writes itself. Elite coverage on the back end, strong teammates on the line with you, and of course one of the top linebacking duos in the NFL, and uh, you know, really realistically if he underwhelms then it's just him and it'll be another one of those sad situations where the jets bought um you know an asian player you know on the the downside but whew, knock on wood this has all the makings of the the same kind of trance 
what am I trying to say here? Has the same makings of essentially the Lake and Tomlinson deal, right? Where from a skill set perspective, the environment that he was in, uh, same or, or equivalent kind of talent level that he was going to. This is a match made in heaven for a guy like Hassan Reddy. Also, it's not just, you know, random hype from a teammate. When you think about the ESPN um, uh surveys that they've been putting out by the executive coaches and scouts we did get the most recent top edge rusher survey and while Hassan Reddick didn't make the top 10 list he did get an honorable mention here for those that still got some kind of votes in this category for what he's been able to accomplish over his last four to five years and him still being a dominant force on this line so I'm looking for him to win it. He's going to have a lot of motivation to get this done as well because if he can land this Defensive Player of the Year award, it's going to go a long way towards the Jets or another team providing that long-term extension and security that he's looking for. Now, perfect segue here. The most recent news around his contract is that Per Rich Samini, the Jets are doubling down and have no intentions on caving uh, with his absence from train, uh, OTAs and minicamp. They don't plan on offering him this extension, but per Rich Samini, it does look like they're willing to sweeten his current deal. Take a look at his situation. He's ranking around 20th in terms of pass rushers in the NFL for his average annual value. The Jets are still working with around six million dollars in cap space or so. Probably can make another move or two to you know shift that number up more if they need it. Ideally, you would like to use that money for a break the glass, uh, you know, offensive line issue or concern, or just adding a piece, either a wide receiver or safety, if something tends to falter or be a bigger problem than expected. But it's worth investing that money into Hassan Reddick, given this whole conversation. If he can have a defensive player of the year type season, if he really does end up being that crucial uh, piece across from Jermaine Johnson this year that helps set this defense apart. Um, and so it, it is what it is. If you're going to be all in, be all in. But it ultimately just feels like something the Jets are mulling over to make sure they have him at training camp. And, you know, Hassan Reddick is a smart guy, savvy veteran. It only makes sense that you're going to show up for training camp at some point. And I've already talked about this. The leverage is in the Jets defense's favor or not the Jets defense, but the Jets front office favor because he needs to play right he's not skipping a full season in the midst of trying to get an extension it's just not a good look and uh we'll see ultimately how this pans out it, whatever the the contract restructure ends up looking like uh unless he's getting a fully guaranteed deal it's not something i'm really concerned about uh we're just waiting really to see him get on the field and we'll see if he ends up missing the first week or two to try to make a final push to get something to happen but let me know what you guys think. Can Hassan Reddick win this Defensive Player of the Year award? And what do you think it will take to get him on the field in terms of uh, working through his contract? And I'll catch you guys again. Peace.